So here's the situation. Nine months ago, JFK Airport decided to shut down one of its longest runways. So you have one of the biggest airports in the world, and they've decided to shut down for reconstruction and for rebuilding one of the longest runways in the world. What's going to happen? So think about Route 95, busy Friday afternoon. You're going to take a couple of lanes away. What's going to occur? Costs are going to go through the roof, emissions through the roof, and you're going to have a lot of unhappy travelers. This is the position JFK was facing in shutting down its runway for four months. But in the middle of all of it, remember that tarmac delay rule that the government put in place? In the middle of all this, the government was saying, listen, if a plane sits out at the end of a runway for more than three hours, we're going to fine the aircraft and your customers up to $3 million an aircraft. This is the challenge that JFK faced. And we're going to talk about what Passer did to help with that issue and that problem in just a few minutes. Passer Aerospace is a business intelligence company. And we provide pred predictive analytics to the aviation market. Now, there's a lot of great companies that provide business intelligence and predictive analytics across industries. But Passer is the only company that provides the data, the decision support, the predictive analytics, and in some cases, the complete turnkey operations specifically for the aviation market. At the very core of what we are, as Tim mentioned, is a very unique database. So we ingest government data feeds. And what's really critical is we have our own surveillance sensor network located throughout the United States, throughout North America, and different parts of the world, where we're pulling in live air traffic information into our database. We've all been in situations. We've pushed back from the gate. You see 25 planes in front of you, and you think, there's got to be a better way. Or you take a three-hour flight, you get to your destination airport, you're 20 minutes early, you're all excited, and you wait for 20 minutes at the gate. And you think there's got to be a better way. Or you make a connection through a big hub city, and you connect, but your bag doesn't. And you think there's got to be a better way. Well, Passer, using government data, collaborating with the government, with airports and airlines, we have a better way. Uh, we provide our capabilities from the moment of pushback to the point of arrival. And we focus on helping our customers reduce costs, re reduce emissions, and improve the overall travel experience. Our customers are many. We work with most of the major airlines, including six of the top seven, all the hub carriers, over 50 airports over 200 business aviation organizations in the US government. For Continental Airlines, for example, almost never now will you pull up to a gate at Continental and not be greeted, not have that aircraft ready because of our predictive analytics. At United Airlines, diversions are, unnecessary diversions are eliminated because they have all the information they need to make a better decision on should we divert or not divert going into an airport. It's the captain's decision at the, end the day, at the end of the day, but he needs good information. At Massport, Boston Logan Airport, we took a manual process of landing fee capture and management and completely automated the system with government data in collaboration with the government. This is what the database looks like. This is what it's fed by. That uh, Star Trek like device in orange off to the left in the upper left hand corner, that's one of our passive radars. These radars are located relatively close to an air traffic control system, so we can hear the pulse coming from the ATC radar. But in addition, we're listening to the GPS signals coming from the planes, ADSB, as many of us know it as. We're also listening to, if there's pilots in the room, your collision avoidance systems, or TCAS, we're listening to the broadcast from the plane as well, pulling in government data feeds and then pulling in feeds from our, our, our customers as well. So it's the most unique database and the largest private air traffic network in the world. That's what feeds the, that's what feeds the predictive analytics. So it's live, it's real time. It's years of data that's being stored, and that's that stored data that helps us drive the predictive analytics. 
As an example, it's absolutely critical for an airline to know what time a plane's going to land. It's like a factor waiting for the raw resource to arrive, right? Here's an example of a study we did with one airline over a 30-day period where we first took in th their ability to predict what time a plane is going to land. The bottom line is up to 10 minutes off the airline was, and at the top line was five minutes. So up to 40% of the time, they don't know exactly what time the plane's coming in. And every single study we've done with every single carrier has had the same data. And then once passer is deployed, this is the percentage of the time that passer's predictive analytics is off. We're, we're right about 100% of the time. You've got to know what has happened in the past to be able to predict what an aircraft's going to do. You have to, have to know all the conditions of the airspace. So pulling in government data, using our predictive analytics, we're able to power our data throughout the entire airline system. Uh, we're perhaps most proud of recently signing a contract with Homeland Security and the FAA. Uh, their mission is safety and security. And we think it's a perfect match for the database, the historical information that we have, the predictive analytics, and we're very proud to be able to, to serve the needs of the federal government in this way. So let's get back to JFK, that nightmare scenario. Biggest airport, longest runway, it's been shut down, what's going to occur, and on top of all of the situation that I presented to you, here in the United States and throughout North America, when a plane is ready to push back, it pushes back. It doesn't matter whether the runway is ready or not, it pushes back. And that's why you can have the 20 aircraft waiting for departure. So what JFK did was, in facing this scenario of, of four months having the, having the airport runway be down, they turned to passer because over the last several years during winter operations, so a very complex event, a passer with his professional services team and its fully automated software has helped to ensure that only the, the appropriate aircraft push at the end of the runway at the right time. Because during winter operations, you can't have a line of 20 aircraft. They're going to have to constantly go back and de-ice. So they came and said, listen, the same process you put in place during winter operations a couple of days a year, we want to do it now 24-7 for the next four months. Very complex, you have over 1,000 flights a day, you have 90 airlines you have to coordinate with, you have 280 different wind, weather, runway configurations that you have to take into account at any one time. So that at 1437, when planes have to push back, you have to have a fully automated capability, you have to be able to share the data as we did with all of the carriers using JFK, so carriers all around the world. We shared our same decision support, everything was collaborative, it was completely transparent, and it powering almost all of this was not only how do you push the aircraft back, but what's the optimal configuration for the airport. So is our outcomes database as well that helped you determine what's the best arrival rate, departure rate for the airport. Can we make this even better than what it originally was? So the results were spectacular. During the four month period, Fuel costs dropped, emissions dropped, taxi times dropped. Now remember, this isn't month over month when the runway was down. This was comparing when they, were, when they lost their longest runway year over year. So a month, the period of time when they didn't have the runway to when they did have the runway. So the results were just great. Now Passer did not do it on, our, on their own. We did it in conjunction with and under the leadership of the New York Port Authority with the FAA and with big airlines servicing the JFK Airport. We were very pleased that after the four-month period, they decided to extend this program of uh, taking delays at the gate and metering the aircraft out over indefinitely. So there was a write-up in the Wall Street Journal uh, just a short time ago that talked about the success of this program. And I think I like the second quote the, boat, the best from the manager of operations at JFK. Because what he's saying now is, I think we found a whole new way of running an airport. So yesterday, there were some comments about uh, NextGen and this government's program of, of, uh, in, of uh, matching industry with government. Uh, and people were saying it may not be the best idea. We think it's perfect. Passer has proven that working government 
working with industry can work. And when you consider all the costs associated just with this one flight, that it's over $100,000 that Pastor could save for our customers, you can imagine the cost and why we over have over a $20 billion problem when you consider all the flights that are flying at any one time. So we think Pastor, using government data, working in conjunction with the government, uh, is a uh, perfect example of the great tenets of Gov 2.0, whereby industry and government working together, we can solve some big problems. Thank you.